number three. And I want you to get in, in your mind a picture as we read this because this is a, a text that I'm using to lead up to something else. But I want you to picture this in your mind. Uh, everybody's got an imagination, some more than others. Uh, I, I know a fellow that, that had such an imagination that I was his imaginary friend. Now, think on that one a while. Amen. Uh, I just thought I had a friend, but I was his imaginary friend. But anyway, everybody's got an imagination, and if you'll use that, uh, it'll help you when you study the Word of God. If you'll just try to put yourself in the place of, of, the, you know, of the, the, the person that's given the message in the Scripture, and you try to picture that, then it'll help you sometimes in, in relating to the Scripture. But we, here we have in John chapter number 3 a picture of, a, of John uh, coming out of the wilderness. Before we begin, let's pray. Father, again, thank you for the word of God this morning. Blessed, I pray. Bless everyone under the sound of our voice. God, forgive me of my sins and my failures. I know, dear God, that I'm unworthy to even uh, bow my head before thee. And God, I'm not worthy to stand behind this sacred desk. But God, I pray, God, you'd help us this morning. I pray the spirit of the living God would move up and down these aisles, God, and round behind this pulpit. And God, I pray that you touch our hearts with the power of the Word of God. Lord, give us the message, Father, that we need to hear. Help us to deliver it, God, by your grace and in the Spirit of God. In Jesus' name, amen. John, uh, Matthew chapter number 3 and verse number 1. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Uh, this man, John, he was a, a, after he was a, we'd call him a rural man today. He, he would be one that come out of the sticks. Uh, he was the mountain man, we'll say, of John the Baptist. But he had something He had something in his heart that had to come out. And when John presents himself, he is presenting himself as a messenger of the Lord and he's preaching the gospel. Now, uh, today men wear coats and ties and sometimes no coats, sometimes no ties, but we, you know, uh, we dress in nice clothes and we get behind the pulpit. Well, John, that didn't matter to him. That that did not matter to John. What mattered to John was the message that he had. And here comes John, and, I, and his message was this, verse 2, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair, and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. So he ate of the wild, and he dressed of the wild, and you would think seeing him that he was a wild man coming out of the wilderness. But let me tell you something. His appearance was soon forgotten. God gives us in Matthew the way that he appears to be, uh, I believe, to let us know that it doesn't, you know, it matters the message that we have in our heart, us preachers, more than it does the way we look. Now, I believe we ought to look nice. I believe a preacher ought to look like a, a preacher and dress nice when he's behind the pulpit. But John came that way, and he came with a message in his heart, and you can see him clothed in camel's hair and a, and a leather uh, girdle about his loins and uh, with a handful of, of honeycomb in his hand. Amen. But you picture this man, but look beyond the man and look at his message. His message was a message of repentance. You know what we don't hear a lot of from America's pulpits anymore? Repentance. We don't hear a lot of preaching about repentance. We hear a whole lot of preaching about how good you can be, how good you can make yourself be, and, and, and we hear a lot about lifting yourself up and lifting each other's up, and all that, I guess, is fine and well. But you know what John preached? He preached repentance. And you know what's lacking in our society today, especially among Baptist churches, is the preaching, the message of repentance. And I'm telling you, friend, everybody in here that got saved and is saved by God's grace, you got there because you repented of your sins. And if you did not repent of your sins, then you never got born again. You've never been saved by the grace of God. Without repentance, there is no salvation. And so, friend, we repent of our sins and we call upon uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and He saves us by His grace. But John, he preached that message of repentance. Now, in, in, the, in the book of John, <coughs> John chapter number 1, let me read you these scriptures. There was a man sent from God whose name was John, verse number 6. John chapter 1, verse number 6. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Now, John, 
in the Word of God, it is declared that John was the forerunner of Christ. It is declared that he's not the light, but he's bearing witness of the light. Here we go again. <coughs> now, in, in John chapter number 15, <coughs> I'm sorry, John chapter 1 verse 15, John bare witness of him, and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. <coughs> and of his fullness, I apologize, this will go away in a minute. This is two Sundays in a row. I think I'm getting too excited too quick and getting wound up too quick and not, <coughs> not letting the motor get time to get warmed up. And of his fullness have all we received in grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man has seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. And this is the record of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem <coughs> to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then art thou, Elias? And he saith, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. Then said they unto him, Who art thou, that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am, the, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. So John, again, declares <coughs> that he's the voice of one crying in the wilderness. What do we need today in our society? What do churches need today in this coming year that we gather to worship the Lord? Many, many messages in the country today will be preached, and I'm, I, I belittle no one that preaches a uh, message that try to help people, because I do it, and you know I do it. I don't see anything wrong with trying to uplift people. But I'm telling you, friend, our nation needs more of preaching of repentance. We're in sad shape. Our country's in sad shape. And I blame a whole lot of it on, on preachers such as I that have not preached the message of repentance like we should. And it doesn't just start now. It's been going on for years and years. But the message of repentance is what brings men to salvation. And when men begin to understand that they are lost without God and realize they are of a sinful nature, then they will re realize that they must repent of that sin. Now, as, as John did this, and he told who he was, as John was baptizing in Jordan, he saw Jesus coming, the man that he had, was the forerunner of, the man that he had been preaching about. He saw him coming while he was baptizing. And that <clears throat> familiar verse in John 1, 29, the next day John seeth Jesus coming to him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. John saw Jesus for who Jesus was. <coughs> All right, turn with us again. Verse number 35. Again, the next day after John stood and two of his disciples and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, again he says, Behold the Lamb of God. Now John twice he told men to look at Jesus. Twice John told me, and he said, Behold the Lamb of God. Look at Jesus. Look at Him. And I honestly believe, and this has been my life's verse since I started preaching, and I honestly believe that <coughs> the one thing that I should do is try to get people to behold Jesus. Try to get people to look at Him. Not look at me. Now you can tell what a man I am. I can't, I can't preach without coffee. I don't know what's going on, but it's been two Sundays now. And, I, you know, the old devil just leave me alone. I ain't going to quit just because of a cough. Amen? If, hallelujah. If you'll bear with me, God will help me here in a minute. Amen? And we'll preach here just a little bit. Hallelujah. Amen? 
And it ain't me, friend. I'll just tell you right now, it ain't this voice. It ain't me, but it is Jesus whom I want to proclaim. And if I was the devil, I'd be mad too and try to stop me. Amen. But by the help of God, I'm going to preach. Amen. Jesus is one John was pointed to. And I believe with all my heart, if ever, if ever Baptist preacher called of God today would begin preaching Jesus, I believe he'd make a difference in our nation. I certainly believe he'd make a difference in our communities, in our towns, if we quit preaching everything but preach Jesus. Amen. See, because he's the central theme of the Word of God. Now, we need Jesus in a lot of things in America. But God's people need him most of all to guide our daily lives. Now, as John saw Jesus and he said, Behold the Lamb of God, here in this verse, and verse number 37 says this, And two of his disciples, uh, two disciples heard him speak and they followed Jesus. Now, John was discipling two people. He was discipling two people that were following John. But when John pointed to Jesus and but John said, Behold the Lamb of God, John was telling them, there, here is the man that I've been preaching to you about. Here is the man that I've been telling you about. And they turned from following after John, which was not a bad thing. John was trying to teach them. He was trying to disciple them. But he turned from trying to follow John till they looked and said, we're going to follow Jesus. Amen. Would it not be a great thing in the hearts of every believer if we determined that we're not following man, but we're following God? Amen. And where he leads you, amen, is the place that you ought to go. It took me a long time in the ministry to learn that I must follow God. I must follow him. I've, I've been given all kinds of advice by all kinds of different people. I've been told, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Uh, why don't you, you know, uh, be an evangelist? Why don't you work in the prison ministry? Why don't you become a missionary? But listen, all those things are getting well, and we need men to do those. But I'll tell you something. God called me just to preach, amen, and to pastor. And that's what I want. I want to follow God. I want to follow Him. And everybody, if every Christian will follow God, it'll make a difference in your life. It'll make a difference in the life of every, every believer if we'll determine we're going to follow God. So they followed Jesus. Now, reading on here, then Jesus, <coughs> then Jesus turned and saw them following Say to them, what, what seek you? What are you looking for? And I'll ask you this morning, are you following Jesus? And what are you looking for? What are you looking for in Christ? What are you look, Are you looking for uh, someone to comfort you? Are you looking for someone to help you when you need help and otherwise you don't need him? Let me tell you something, there's a lot of people that never call out to Jesus until they're in trouble. Why seek ye Jesus? Why do you want to follow him? And they said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, been interpreted, Master. <coughs> didn't, they, didn't they ask a strange question? Where dwellest thou? They asked Jesus the question, where do you live? Are you that interested in Christ that we want to know where he's at? Where are you, Jesus? You say, well, he lives in my heart. He lives in my heart. But sometimes I get a, I get a distance from him. Now, I know he's always right there. I know Jesus is always right there ready to help me when I need help. But they wanted to know where he dwelt so they could go and get as close to him as they could get. Now, I've been pondering on these things this week, Lord. How close can I get to you? And believe me, when you start determining things like that and to start desiring things like that, then the devil's going to come and try his best to drive a wedge between you and the Lord. He'll try to uh, draw, you know, put a wedge between you and your family because our heart's desire is to get close to the Lord. And church, as a, as a, a body of believers, that ought to be the desire of the church, <clears throat> that we get close to the Lord that we get close to Him. Because when we're close to someone, we're better out to follow them. Like a car going down the highway, they want to, sometimes they want to follow close to the preacher. That's all I can figure out. 
I don't even know that they know I'm a preacher, but they get real close to me because they want to follow me. But I can always tell if they're just following me or just trying, or, or it's the devil sending someone along unknowingly just to try to get under my skin. Because if they're really trying to follow me, then when I speed up, they'll speed up. And when I slow down, they'll slow down. But normally what's happening, when I slow down, they pass me, so they're just trying to irritate me to start with. But how close do you want to get to the Lord? How close is it? Listen, I, I want to feel, I want to be so close to the Lord that I feel His breath upon me. That I feel the power of His Spirit upon me. I want to be close to the Lord. And these two disciples said, we just want to be where you're at. Where dwellest thou? We want to be where you're at. So He said to them with, with some of the greatest words, and we read this here a couple of times, we see, some of the greatest words here. He saith unto them, Come and see. Many times Jesus says, Come. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Here he tells these disciples, He said, Just come on and see. Just come on and see. You can, you can see where I live. You can see where I'm at. And so what did they do? They followed Him. They came and saw where He dwelled and abode with Him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. Tenth hour would be about... Uh, uh, six o'clock in the afternoon. So they, they dwelt with him. And uh, and he one of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. Now what did what did Andrew do? He said, I gotta go tell somebody else about him. I found Jesus. I see him. I know who he is. I'm close to him. There's somebody else that needs to meet Jesus. And what did he do? He go went and found his brother. See, he didn't go down the road somewhere to a stranger. He went and found his brother because he knew his brother needed to see Jesus. And he went and found his brother. He said, come and see this man. You gotta meet this Jesus. You gotta meet this Savior. You gotta meet this man. So he first findeth his own brother Simon and saith unto him, we have, been, we have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. So Andrew went and found his brother. And he said, we found him. We found the Christ. And he, what did he do? He brought him to the Lord. He brought him to Jesus. Friend, how many of us sat here this morning that have family members that don't know the Lord, that are lost? Do you not think it important, and do I not think it important that we bring them to the Lord? Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And no matter whether you're your neighbor or your brother or your sister, if they don't know the Lord, we need to bring them to Jesus. We need to bring them to the Lord. <clears throat> and then, verse number 43, The day following Jesus would go forth unto Galilee and findeth Philip, findeth another man, so he's calling his workers, he's calling his disciples as his ministry begins. And what does he say to Philip? Follow me. He says, follow me. And then he found some fishermen fishing and he said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And all through the scripture here in the New Testament, in the Gospels, we find Jesus calling men to follow him, calling men to, to go after him, calling people that they, would, that they would go for Him and serve Him and worship Him and witness for Him. We've got a new year ahead of us. This is, you know, this is uh, just a few Sundays in. We've got a new year ahead of us as a church. And would we not do good as a church that all we want to do this year is to convince people they need to follow the Lord. It's for us ourselves to determine in our hearts, Lord, I'm going to follow You. I'm not going to follow man. I'm not going to follow religion. I'm going to follow you. Friend, if we'll just follow God, no telling us what He will do with us. In church, if we'll just follow the Lord, listen, we've done some good things here at the church this past year, and we're looking for many good things to be done here at the church, and we're going to make some improvements on, on things at the church. But listen, we need to keep our eyes focused on the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. No matter what happens, we need to focus on Jesus. And follow him. I watch. I see churches, and I, I watch churches, and and uh, you'd say, well, should you do that? Well, I learn a lot by doing that. And I see some churches that that you know they they have a big following, but they don't have a big 
a, a big fellowship. They've got a big following and a lot of people, but, but they don't have a good fellowship at the church. Friend, I'd rather have a few in a good fellowship and, and in a good family at the church than have, than have 2,000 and have no fellowship. I see churches that have a good following, but they don't have, uh, you know, they don't have a good relationship with the Lord. Sure, they know how to make each other feel better, but they don't have a good relationship with the Lord. Listen, I face times in my life when no matter what anybody said to me, it would not make me feel better. Have you? <coughs> People come by and pat you on the back. They come pat you on the back and say it'll be all right. Well... That's comforting to have people to do that. I, I like you. Amen. It's comforting to have people do that to you. And I like it, Brother John. I like it when somebody comes along to me and, and, and says, Man, I appreciate you. That makes me feel good. Don't it make you feel good? Amen, Brother Venus. Somebody, you might be having a, a bad day. Somebody say, I appreciate you. Don't that make you feel good? But you know what? Amen. You know what happens? It makes me feel better than anything in the world. And, and sometimes it helps and sometimes it don't. But when Jesus comes by and he puts his arms around me and he says everything's going to be all right and no matter what else is going on, God puts his loving arms around me and guess what? I'm comforted and I wanna, oh, I, I'm going to follow Jesus. I'm going to follow Jesus because he makes everything better and he makes me feel much better. I'm just going to follow Jesus. And friend, that's what, that's what God wants us to do is to follow the Lord. Jesus will use those that follow him. Now, that's my introduction. Amen. That's my introduction. I'll give you a few things and we'll be done. Jesus wants you to follow him, number one, faithfully. That's a good number here this morning. Amen. I appreciate every one of you being here this morning. Thank you for coming. Amen. But you know what? It would be good to have this number tonight. I ain't fussing at you. I'm just telling you what it'd be good to have. It'd be good to have this number on Wednesday night. Amen. It's getting quiet. Now, don't get quiet on me. Don't get mad at me. I'm just telling you what it'd be good to have. It'd be good to have this number on Wednesday night, wouldn't it? What say ye? Faithfulness. When we follow God, it will lead us to be faithful to Him. There's all kinds of things that get in the way of coming to church. But most of those things are unnecessary. Most of those things the devil will put in your way. Well, I don't feel good. I don't feel like going to church. Well, guess what? I don't either. Somebody just sighed a sigh of relief. I'm glad it just ain't me. But you know what? I'm not going to let my feelings keep me away from my fellowship at the house of God. Amen? Yeah, you, you ask my wife. Sometimes sometimes on, on Wednesday or on Sunday night, you know, I'm tired. It's been a long week. I preached and I'm tired. And, uh, and uh, I'll tell you, I, sometimes I really just don't feel like going to church. But I don't go because I don't feel like going to church. I call because I want the fellowship of God and the fellowship of God's people. And I've never been to church where I didn't feel better than when I left than when I come. Amen. I've come physically feeling bad before. I mean, just feeling bad, you know. Uh, maybe it aches or pains. and wonder if I was coming down with something. But I've never came in feeling bad that I didn't leave feeling pretty good. Now, that might not last all day, but hey, man, it's good while I'm there. Praise the Lord, I'll take it any day. So if you're going to be faithful this year, you should faithfully follow the Lord and be faithful to His house, be faithful to the church, be faithful in your prayer life, be faithful in your Bible reading, and, and, be, and just be faithful to God. God will bless you for it. I know some people, in, I've known some people in life that have that, that really thought they were impressing someone when they would go to church once every couple of weeks. I'm getting them looks now. I'm sorry, but it's just the way it is. I've had I've had people show up at church and they <clears throat> strut themselves, you know, around and once every two weeks, and I'm thinking, well, good to have you, but what's the occasion?
Let me tell you something, friend. We ought to faithfully follow the Lord. We ought to be faithful to Him and faithful to the church. And listen, if I get this out of the way early in the year, amen, you might not have to hear it a while. A, a, a lot more if you listen to me. And if you listen to the Lord, faithfully, faithful to God, faithful to His house, faithful to Sunday school. Hey, we got, a, we got some good Sunday school teachers. We got, some, we got some faithful Sunday school teachers, and they need people to teach. Amen. Now, come on, you with me or, or, or not here? Amen. They need people to teach to. And listen, some of you here got kids, bring them to Sunday school. Bring them here. Let these teachers teach them what they've studied to teach. You adults, come to Sunday school. It'll be a blessing to you. That's where you learn. That's why it's called Sunday school. You learn things. And we want to encourage you to come to Sunday school. Be here. Now, there's things that providentially hinder people from coming to church. But not everything is a providential hindrance. You know what a providential hindrance is? Now, I'm going to tell you, so if you've been using any other excuse besides this, it ain't a providential hindrance no more. Providential hindrance is something that God will accept at the judgment seat of Christ when you have to answer to Him and when I have to answer to Him why I didn't go to church on Sunday night. Oh, that hurts. I'll tell you something, friend. I've got a lot to answer for when I get the judgment seat of Christ. Look at me. Now, I'm not talking to you now. I'm talking to the preacher. Everybody look at the preacher. This preacher has a lot to answer for when I get to the judgment seat of Christ because of the way I used to treat church. Because of the way I used to treat God when He come on Sunday. I didn't go because I'd use every excuse in the world not to go. I've got a lot to answer for. I don't want to be guilty of that anymore in my life. I want to be faithful to God. I want to be faithful to the church. I want to follow Him. So be, following God means to be faithful. Following God means to be faithful to Him only. Be faithful to Him only. Not just the church, but be faithful to the Lord. Now see, <clears throat> I've got a responsibility to you as pastor and the preacher you're hearing this morning, okay? I've got a responsibility to God, and I've got to be responsible to you for what I preach because I will stand before the Lord with my messages. And if I preach to you that you're to follow me, then I'm preaching to you wrong. You're not to follow me, you're to follow Jesus. Only Jesus. Only Him. So to follow Jesus means that you're to follow Him only. Then number three, to follow Him means that you are listening to Him. Whatsoever He saith unto you, do it. How many times has the Lord told me to do something and I didn't do it? Oh my, oh me, how many times God's told me, and you know what, I pay for it every time, and I'll pay for it again at the judgment seat of Christ. I've shown preaching some messages before because I didn't, I didn't feel like that, that it was, you know, that, that, that I should do that. That's why I'm preaching the way I am this morning, because I'm not going to be guilty of that no more. God helping me, I'm going to preach what the Lord gives me. But I've been, I've been, I've been, you know, a few times I've said, well, Lord, I'll, I'll just, I'll preach this this morning. God said, preach that. I, Lord, I preached it. So 15 or 20 minutes in the flesh is as best I could do, and I've, I've come down from there. Nobody's got nothing out of the message. People have been defeated, and that's been years ago. I've tried not to do it since I've been here, and people have been, have, have wondered what in the world was that all about. It's because the preacher wasn't minding God. But I want to be faithful to follow Him. I want to be faithful to learn from Him. I want to be faithful to lean on Him. I want to be faithful to follow Him and do what God wants me to do and listen to what God wants me to hear. You follow God, you listen to Him. I'll just tell you this. If God tells you to lay out a church and go to the ball game on Sunday, if God's telling you that, you go ahead and do it. Amen. If God's telling you to lay out and go fishing on Sunday, go ahead. Amen. If God's telling you that, that's fine. See, you need to listen to the Lord. 
You need to listen to God. Follow Him. Listen to Him. Then we need to learn that not only to listen to Him, but we need to lean on Him. Trust the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. Lean on the Lord. Follow Him and He'll, he'll direct your steps. He'll guide your way. He'll lead you in the paths of righteousness. For His name's sake, just lean on Him. There's been many times when I tried to lean on the old flesh and it falls. But lean on the Lord. There's been times when I've tried to lean on the preacher and that failed me. But lean on the Lord, He'll never fail you. You know why? Because He's strong and we too can be strong in the power of His might. If we'll lean on the Lord. To follow Jesus means to listen to Him. It means to, to be faithful to Him. It means to be faithful only to Him. It means to listen and learn and lean on Him. Everybody bow your head just a minute. Everybody just bow your head a minute. Let me ask you a question. How many of you this morning are faced with a, with a trying burden on your heart? Raise your hand. God bless you. Many hands are raised. You can look back up. Now listen, to those that raised your hand, lean on the Lord. I'm trying to help you. The preacher's trying to help you this morning. I'm going to tell you, beyond what a doctor can do for you, beyond what a preacher can do for you, beyond even what your church can do for you, God can do it for you if you lean on Him. Lean on the Lord. When all else seems to not work, lean on the Lord. And then learn to lean on Him. Then number five, I've got two more and I'll be through. Follow Him one step at a time. Now see, I'm bad. I've always been bad to look down the road and see what I'm going to do next. That's some kind of syndrome. What do you call that? Impatient syndrome? But everything I've done, I, you ask my wife, I always try to look too far down the road. I can't listen. I don't know what's going on tomorrow. I don't know what I'm going to face tomorrow. I don't know what I'm going to face next week. But I do know this, God's there. And one step at a time, I need to follow the Lord. One step at a time, I need to follow Him. And when the Lord says, okay, this is what you do right now, then you do it. And my preaching, to this, my preaching this morning is one step. I'm trying to follow God. This is what to preach today. What am I going to preach tonight? If the Lord asks me, I'll be preaching back in the book of the Revelation. But He might change that. I, am, I want to be so in step with the Lord that if He wants to change direction, tell me, amen. I'm not going to walk off and leave where He went. I want to go where God went. Brother James, come up here. <laughs> Don't sweat it, man. I ain't going to touch you. Now follow me. Get real close. What James doing? Hey, he he got hey he got so close that he touched me. Hallelujah to God. Ah, oh, Jesus, they bring me. Now we we that's that's the best illustration I can come up with is. Is, for, is to show people how to follow the Lord. Just stay in touch. Just stay in step with Him. Hey, once in a while you get so close to Him He touches you. Hallelujah. Sometimes you get so close you can about feel His breath breathing down the back of your neck when you're breathing close to Him because you're close, you're following Him. Oh, don't I want that in my life more than anything else that I'd be so close to the Lord that I can feel His breath upon me. Oh, hallelujah, that I feel him once in a while. I see that brother back. He just comes up and puts his hands on me. Oh, Lord, help me to feel that close to the Lord. But if, he's going, if I'm going to feel that, I'm going to have to follow him. I'm going to have to follow him. James, come back up here. You did good. Now I'm going to follow you. Into that wall. <laughs> Here's what happens. I don't want to go that way. Now, see? See, that's what happens. That's what happens. Sometimes I'll be following the Lord. The Lord goes somewhere I don't want to go. 
Hello? You can sit back down. Okay. <laughs> but have you ever done that? Lord, that way looks too rough. I don't want to do that, Lord. That way looks too hard. That man looks too mean for me to talk to about the Lord. That woman looks like she'd just bite my head off if I say anything to her. Let me tell you this story again. I've told it many times, but it always gets the point across. I'm having a good time. We're going to be here just a minute or two longer, but you stay with me, all right? Used to, used to be in the prison, in the prison ministry. When I say I was in prison, I was in the prison ministry. And I, we went to this big, uh, this, uh, big state penitentiary out in Mississippi, and there was a, a place uh, out there that had maximum security. I mean, we went through about 15 doors before they turned us loose in there and said, have at it. I said, okay. It thrills me to death here. I mean, maximum security, they ain't in there from stealing candy from Ingalls. Amen. They're in there for bad things. And there's this big old tall dude. Come here a minute. Now, he'd, look, he'd make you look short. He'd still make you look short. <laughs> he was seven foot three or four if he was six foot. Now, just stand there a minute. And I'd notice people come up to him, and they'd come up to him like this, and they'd look at him, and he'd, look, he'd say something, mumble something to him. Just, you know, like that. And boy, they'd tie tail it. <laughs> well, I kept watching. Don't sit down. I ain't through with you. I, I, I'd watch. I'd watch, and somebody else would come up there. You know, they were down here about this, and they'd look up at him, and they'd start to say something to him, and he'd mumble something under here. Well, you know, that I'm curious. I'm a curious fellow. And I thought, well, why ain't nobody talking to that man? And by that time, you know, I'd, I, you know, I'd pretty well, well, I didn't care, you know. I, I'm going to find out. I'm in here anyway. If they start a ride, I'm, I'm, I'm here. So, And Lord Lord kept saying, just go talk to him. I said, Lord, there ain't nobody else getting to talk to him. Why do you want me to talk to him? So I went up there to him. And I started to say something. And he mumbles at me. And I said, the Lord loves you anyway. God give me courage. You know what that man was telling everybody? As far as I know, this is what, he's, what he was telling me. He said, I killed my wife. Shot her in the street in front of a Baptist preacher and two law officers. Scaring him to death. They was leaving. But you know what? Come find out that's what he was doing. And they, he was telling the truth. Now, I'm just a little old country boy from the mountains of western North Carolina, and, and I, you know, I began to talk to him about the Lord, and I, and I, you know, I, you can sit down. I got to question him, talking to him, and I didn't ask him how he done it. I didn't ask him the gory details, but he told me that. And, and God gave me courage to stand there and just talk to that big old tall fella. Man, he was, he was a mountain. He was a big old guy. He wasn't just big this way. He was big this way. He was a mountain of a man. But I began to talk to him about the Lord, and you know what I found out about that man? He was just like me. All he was was a sinner that needed salvation. And I said, well, listen, we're having service after a while over in the cafeteria. Why don't you come and be in the service? And guess what? He showed up for service. Now, I'd like to report to you that he come and got saved that night. He didn't. But he come down there with those cold, still eyes, and he watched while we preached the gospel. I don't ever know what happened to him. Never to this day do I know what happened to that man. But I'm hoping somewhere, somehow, the message got to his heart and he got right with the Lord. But listen, friends, we got to follow him. We got to follow him only. We got to listen to him. We got to learn from him. And whatever we do as we follow him, we got to follow him one step at a time. Whether it be whether it be witnesses, somebody that you've never seen or heard, or whether it be or you know whatever God tells you to do it one step at a time. You got to follow God. How will you follow Him? Then we got to learn when we follow the Lord to wait on Him. Wait on the Lord and be patient. The Bible says, "Wait on the Lord and wait on the Lord." And as we follow the Lord, we need to learn to faithfully follow Him and wait on Him. Now everybody here this morning that's come to church has come faithfully to the house of God today. You've come, you're not here by because that you don't, uh, you know, because you just happen to be here. You're, called, you're here because it's the will of God that you be here. Preacher, I didn't want to come to church this morning. Boy, you're glad you did, didn't you? Or you're mad at me, one of the two. It's, it's one way or the other. 
But listen, if you'll faithfully follow God, you know what you're going to find out in your life? Your life's going to have a little more meaning to it if you're faithful to the Lord. The burdens of life are still going to be there. The cares of life are still going to be there. The hurts of life are still going to be there. But if you're faithful to God, you're closer to Him. And you can follow Him and know that you're following God. And He's never going to take you anywhere that He can't keep you. Faithfully following the Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the Word of God this morning. Lord, we've tried to be obedient to you. God, we've tried to follow you in the message. Father, I pray right now, if there be someone here amongst this crowd that's lost, I pray that you touch them. Father, I thank you for helping me with my voice this morning, letting us to preach, and God, for rebuking the devil from around us. We thank you for that. Lord, I pray right now, Lord, if we're quiet before thee, I pray, God, that you touch hearts. Speak to us, Lord, and we'll thank you in Jesus' name.